What is up, internet? I'm DropTech, and I'm going to teach you how to make an 808 kick and sub contact patch, which will sound a bit like this. Now you might be thinking, well, that's not very good. It's just a kick and a sub. And you're right, but wait, there's more. If I press higher up on the keyboard, The sub is being pitched, but the kick is staying at the original pitch. So that means that there's no funny things going on when you're tr pitching the transients, etc, etc. So, I shall say, show you how I made this from the start. So to make this, you're going to need to load a new instance of contact in whatever door you prefer. Sorry about the audio dropout. Um, let's get rid of this one. Open the browser. Now you need to have two samples, one being a um, an 808 style kick with a long tail like this one, if it will let me play it. So that's got a nice long tail, so we'll be using that for the tail end of this, of the patch. release put the release down a bit okay um so at the moment this is being tracked i am not sure what the uh, original pitch of the thing is so if we get any kind of sensor, we can use So we want it on D sharp. Sweet. So now that's, if I play a C, it's going to be a C. Um, you have to do this with your sample, work out the original pitch, and then change the root key so that it matches. So that's now a C. Unless my ears are fucked. Sweet. Um, then you want to bring in a new sample that's going to be the um, the uh, kick transient part of it, the first attack. Um, so you can use any kick you want. I've got a folder of my own kicks here, which I will use. That one sounds pretty nice. Now, I really wish you could just drag, drag the uh, new sample in onto a new zone, but... I cannot seem to do this for the life of me. So what I have to do is duplicate this uh, group. And in this one, replace the, ex the existing sample. Uh, exchange sample button there. If you right click, exchange sample. And that's the one we went for. Perfect. Okay, so to stop the new sample tracking, we need to turn the tracking button off here. Now this means wherever we play on the on the keyboard, it's going to stay at the same pitch, but we only want it for one of them. So you need to turn off edit all groups, pick the group that is the uh, the initial kick transient and turn tracking off make sure that the tail one still has the tracking on. Now you can move it about the keyboard and the note will follow. Okay, so now that we've done this, we need to uh, sort out the attack of the tail so it's not overlapping with the first transient. Uh, so to do this, pick the tail part, come down here to the envelope and move it to about I don't know, 100 or whatever. You can see the exact length of your transient part um, in the wave editor. 
you see it ends about 200 you want to start cross fading at about 90 to 100 um so yeah, change the attack between 90 and 100 that'll do also you can see here that there's a quite a big bump at the start of this sample so i'm just going to drag the start to a more even point sweet um now you can move about the release on the tail as well if you want it to ring out that's always quite nice um but what you will find is when you play samples higher up on the keyboard they're very short so what we can do now is make a little loop and that will allow us to infinitely hold the note down and the sample will go on forever essentially so you do that by clicking sample loop dragging it to the desired loop length I don't know why I have a million loops but whatever um, and you just mess around with the position until it sounds natural or as natural as you can possibly make it there we go that's sounding pretty good so if you have quite a tight loop pull the cross fade up so you don't get clicking we can now infinitely hold that note down so that means this patch can be used for any tempo track um, you can always adjust the release and it's always going to work and if you decide that you don't like the kick part you can just right click exchange sample and use any any attack you like um, so you can use it from track to track and it's not no one's going to know that you're using the same patch so now that you've got to this stage and you can play it about and it's exactly how you want it um, you can go ahead and further process this so inside contact there's many many different effects you can use um, if I get rid of the wave editor quickly and the mapping one here we go groups so this is the um, that's the transient part that's the tail part. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could rename them so you don't forget like I did. Tail. Transient. Um, so yeah, you could, for example, on the tail, just add some compression just to keep it more even or some tape saturation for a bit of warmth. The transient sounds horrible now that I changed it out. I might quickly change it back. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, you could, I don't know, if the, the first part's peaking a bit too much, you could add a limiter onto it, onto the transient part, just to control the uh, peaks. Uh, any number of different things you could do. Um, also, if you've set up contact for multiple outputs, you can um, use different different outputs and have have them on different channels. So you could use different plugins to affect the tail and the transient individually. So you could have different a distortion on the tail and a bit less distortion on the transient, etc., etc. As you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. Anyway, that's all we've got time for today. Hope you've enjoyed episode one of Drop Techniques. Please subscribe, etc., etc. Follow me on Facebook, whatever. Um, I have a Twitch account, which is Drop Tech with a three instead of the E, um, which in the future, once I get used to the screencasting thing, I'll be doing some live streams of production and the odd game. But yeah, thanks for watching.